If you want to create packaging design that looks like this, but you feel really unsure how to use dye lines. Today we're going to demystify how to go from a sketch to a finished printed packaging design. A really helpful tool to make this whole process a lot easier is Pactora, who have really kindly decided to sponsor this video, but more on that later. Before we actually dig into the design, I want to introduce the brand we're designing for. It's called Sunnyside and it's actually my own personal stationery brand. I create handmade stationery products and today we're going to be designing for these notebooks. What I want to do is create a gift set of five notebooks that can be this beautiful box that you can give away for Christmas or as a present to someone that you really like. The very first thing I did was to look up the kind of box that I want to be using. This way I can download the die lines and know exactly what space I have to work with. For some of my past projects, clients already have picked out a printer and they've sent over die lines from that specific printer. But whenever that's not the case, you can use Pactora to actually find the type of packaging that you want to use, customize the settings and then download the dye lines. And this is also a great way to reduce waste because I'm sure all of us has bought like a bag of chips or something else where you've got tons of extra space in the bag. And this is really wasteful when we're shipping products because all of that space could have been used up by actual products. So when you can customize those dimensions, you can make sure they fit perfectly to the product you're designing for. I had a little browse through the website and I found this box that I really like. It's called a flip top box mailer. I like that it's a really simple gift box, but I still have these flaps at the front that I can use to close it in a really beautiful way. Maybe we can incorporate a nice ribbon or a sticker to seal it to make it feel extra gift worthy. I want to make sure that the packaging that I'm actually going to be printing is going to be the perfect exact size. So I started by stacking up all my five notebooks and measuring exactly how tall and how wide and how deep this box needs to be. I want to quickly point out two things that I really like here. The first thing I really like is that you can actually choose the unit. So you can choose millimeters or inches, for example. That's really helpful because sometimes clients might give me measurements in inches or sometimes in millimeters. And instead of having to convert that and risk it being a little bit off and the product not fitting the packaging, we can actually be exact in our measurements. And the second one is that I can choose size mode. And that means that, for example, in this case, my notebooks are a specific size. I know that size. So I pick inner measurements because that way I know that the notebooks are all going to fit. I'm going to download the die lines now and I'm going to choose Adobe Illustrator because that's where I like to work, but they have other formats as well. Then I can take this and I can either print it out if I want to sketch on it on just pen and paper, or I can drop the image to procreate and start sketching there. Now that we have all the basics for our packaging, we can start designing. The very first thing I like to start with is hierarchy. So having a think about which information we want someone to see first and which information is going to be most important for someone making a choice to buy this product over another one. In this case, I have a document set up here with all the information I want to include in the packaging. This is how I usually get it from a client as well. We want to have the name of the product, a little bit about it, how many notebooks are included, a bit about the sustainability in paper, and then a little bit about the company as well. If you're designing for other kinds of products, you also sometimes need to include other types of information. Like if you're doing for food products, for example, you might need to include allergens, ingredients, nutritional information. And if you're designing for kids products, you might need the appropriate age, any safety instructions, for example. So make sure you check with your client and also your local area or where it will be sold to see what the regulations are. In this case, I think the information I want to put at the front is the name of the product, a little bit about it being environmentally friendly and how many notebooks are inside. And I think the rest of it we can put on the back. We do also have the sides of the packaging. So I think that could be a great way to highlight something small, maybe about it being handmade, for example. If you feel a bit unsure where to place things and what information is most important, you can have a look at competitor brands because they've usually done tons of research and seen tweaked things once they're on the shelves. And that way you can see, okay, this is what they're choosing to highlight. How is my brand different? And what do I want to put front and center? Certain information might need to go together. For example, nutritional information and the volume of the packaging sometimes needs to be included in the same site of vision. For the box we're designing today, the dimensions are kind of similar to a book which fits perfectly with my type of audience. So what if we choose to design this to look kind of like a beautiful book sleeve? We can use illustration, fit the products inside and use similar motifs. I think that could be perfect. We can use it as a spine of the book, covers. I think that would be really cute. I'm super excited to give this a try. So let's start planning out our design. Before we get started, we really want to understand which sections will be visible once it's folded. So we don't pay a lot of attention to areas that actually will be hidden. And we also want to make sure we understand which sides will be up and down so that we don't design something and then print it and it turns upside down. 
There's actually a really smart way to do this in Pactora. So if you head to the 3D view, you can actually fold and unfold the packaging to different degrees. This means that you can understand which parts will be visible. You can also turn it around to understand which size will be up and down. This is super helpful and has saved me a lot of time not having to actually print a lot of tests to fold it myself and see which ones will be up and down. Once you open the die lines in Adobe Illustrator, you will see these different colored lines and you will also have a legend at the top. The blue line is where we expect our design to be. So that's where we'll try to cut the machine. But sometimes it's not perfectly accurate, so that's why we have these green lines that are for the bleed. So essentially the area between the blue and the green line are going to work as a safety zone, where we want to extend our design out to in case it cuts a little bit further out. And then the red lines are where the packaging will be folded. Now that we know which areas we're going to design for, we can get sketching. I'm working in Procreate because that's where it feels most natural to me. I always grew up drawing with pen and paper and being able to draw straight on the iPad just feels very natural to me. But make sure you find a workflow that works best for you. Once I have the sketch ready, I move into Adobe Illustrator and start assembling the design. Since we already downloaded the die lines as an Adobe Illustrator file, we can just open that and it will be all set up for us. I like to just import the sketch as an image and lock the layer on a different layer in Adobe Illustrator just so that I have it as a reference. Most printers like to have the die lines on their own layer and have that layer locked, just so we make sure that we're not messing with any of the line work there. What we might want to do is use the actual die lines as the background for our packaging. And if you want to do that, you can make sure you're embedding the image of the die line and then ungrouping all the different elements. Once you have this done, you can convert the line into a fill and there you have your background. Make sure that this background is now on a new layer and that the die lines are on a separate layer that's also locked. We can then start adding in all of our text and make sure that the font sizes are big enough. It's really easy to start focusing on the design portion, the illustration portion, but things need to be very readable for it to be functional as a packaging design. Once the text is laid out, we can start adding the more decorative elements. I personally really like using the pen tool, but I know a lot of people like the pencil tool as well, so just feel your way through it and see what fits best for your working style. If you want to have design elements on the inside of the packaging as well, like maybe a sweet message once you open the box, you can just duplicate this artboard and that's going to be printed as a copy on the inside. Sometimes clients can have a little bit of a hard time visualizing what the packaging is going to look like just from die lines. I don't blame them. So what I like to do is you can head back into Pactora and go to that 3D view that we had before and then you can add in your own images for the design and you can preview what the design will actually look like. One of the things that I often spot at this stage is that my text is way too big, way too small, something doesn't feel quite centered. So this is really a helpful moment for you to be able to review your design before you actually get printing. Since I'm going to be making these boxes myself, I'm going to start assembling it now. So here's the moment of truth. Let's put in the notebooks and see how the packaging turned out. I am so excited about how this packaging design came out and I really hope this video helped you feel more confident creating packaging design and interpreting die lines. Pactora is kindly giving all of you 20% off if you're using the code Kayla20. I'll make sure to add the link in the description. This is perfect if you want to use die lines but also if you want to create custom mockups for your projects. Thank you so much for watching and let me know if you have any questions at all. 
Good luck with your projects and see you next time.